And on the line with us, the uh, Distinguished Professor of Economics at Southern Methodist University, the internationally best-selling author of numerous books, including The New Golden Age, The Coming Revolution Against Political Corruption and Economic Chaos, and one of my favorites, Greenspan's Fraud, Dr. Ravi Batra, R-A-V-I-B-A-T-R-A dot com, his website. And Dr. Batra, welcome back. Thank you. Um, so, uh, did, was there a point you you were you were starting to make a point as we hit the last break? Did you want to finish that thought, or should we just pick up some more calls? Uh, go ahead and make make calls. Okay, make great. Calls. Uh, here we go. Sasha in Monroe, Washington, listening on AM ten ninety. You're on the air with Dr. Ravi Batra. Well, hi there. Uh, since President Obama has just announced his attention to be on the middle class. Um, can you tell us what you see for the future of those of us who are low-income, elderly, and poor? Well, I think uh, we have about uh, two more bad, bad years, uh, especially the end, of, second half of this year and the next year, they will be bad. But after that, uh, we will have new reforms uh, in the economy, and then the economy will take off. Uh, so we unfortunately have another 18 to 24 months, which are bad. So, and, wow, so whoever is president next year will take credit for a positive economy, right? Whichever yes, party? By the, by the end of their, uh, by the end of their next term, by the end of their term, uh, the economy would be humming. Yeah. All over the world. Interesting. Frank in Philadelphia. Frank, you're on the air with Dr. Ravi Batra. Yes. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, I really don't believe cutting interest rates on credit cards really going to stimulate too much uh, recovery or job growth or anything like that. You really have to get back to the basics. If you look at 1937, when this country went on a 40-hour work week, which 25 years before that we went from a 50-hour work week to a 40-hour work week, you had people of labor arguing. Okay, that we need to reduce the work week. John L. Lewis, Hutchinson, you had the AFL CIA, hey, the AFL back then, and John L. Lewis hitting him and formed the CIO. But we haven't addressed that problem for almost 100 years now, 85 years. Okay, we still work 40 hours a week. We have technology today out superior anything. We have an oversaturated workforce. We have uh, women. Frank, women do you have a question? I was suggesting there are many other things that we need okay. to do. Dr. Batra, go ahead. Yeah, we need to cut our trade deficit sharply to uh, what I suggested. Who, Doc, Dr. Batra? Dr. Batra? We have to impose a, a tax on outsourcing. Uh, we have to break up Ra the oil companies. Dr. Batra, if I may interrupt you, please. Your, your phone is just badly distorting. Um, uh, Paul is trying to call you, I think, right now on your cell phone. Uh, if we can, uh, if we can change phones, can you can you try and say say say, say, say something now? Uh, uh, yeah, no, it's 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 badly breaking up. I think the battery in your in your wireless phone is dying. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let let me let me just put you on hold, and uh, Paul will work out another phone with you, and uh, you know we'll yeah, because that that is just. Not not working. What's what's Paul doing? Oh, he's okay. Line twelve. Okay, Doctor Batra. Yes. Can okay. You hear me now? now I hear you wonderfully. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's what we should have done to begin with. Okay. So back to uh, your response to this fellow who was saying that uh, you know stimulating the economy short term by by dropping interest rates on debt uh, is not the solution. We have to deal with labor. Well. Uh, all, that's only one one thing that we need to do. There are, there are a whole list of things that should be done because we have a very, very sick economy, mm -hmm. like eliminating the trade deficit, a hefty tax on outsourcing, breaking up the oil companies, breaking up health insurance companies. I mean, there are hundreds of things, many, many things that we need to do to fix this economy. But the point is that once we do all those things, the economy will be fixed in a matter of uh, 12 to 18 months, uh, and, and the, everything will be humming again. So it's, it's, the thing is, the factories are all there. It's yeah. not that we have to build factories. The factories are there. There is just not enough consumer demand to buy goods that those, those factories can produce. 
What and happens? He can be live he would what happens if if uh, Mitt Romney is elected, or if the Republicans hold the House and Senate, and they continue what they've been doing for the last three years of blocking any of the efforts to do the things that you just described? Like you mentioned, the trade deficit. Nancy Pelosi actually got passed out of the House of Representatives a bill that would have that would have stopped the tax break for offshoring jobs and would have given a tax break for bringing factories back to the United States. The Senate Republicans filibustered it because it would have created a couple of million jobs. Well, I really want to use the Federal Reserve mostly mm-hmm. for a variety of policies, like uh, uh, eliminating the trade deficit. You have to get the Fed involved uh, to, to facilitate this dual exchange rate policy that I have suggested. So you, have, you fix your dollar rate at a, at a low price, at a low rate, uh, with respect to countries like China and uh, Singapore and South Korea, etc., which have very large trade surpluses in the United States. Mm-hmm. And once you fix a low exchange rate with respect to their, uh, with respect to your own exports, uh, the trade deficit can be reduced very sharply. Right. So you suggest- I explained it in my books, but it will take more time to do it uh, on your show. But it can be done, and the, uh, and the Republicans in the Senate won't have to be involved, the Federal Reserve would have, would have to manage this, po- this policy. Right. Okay. So we just have to convince Ben Bernanke. Um, yeah, John, John in Highbridge, New Jersey, you're on the air with Dr. Avi Batra. Thanks for watching Free Speech TV. Hi. Uh, thanks for having Free Speech TV. Um, yeah, my question is, you know, uh, Paul Krugman has said, you know, everybody can't stop spending at once. And as you were saying, you know, dropping the credit card rates from 15 to 5, uh, you know, would spur some more of that spending. Now, I run a small business, and the credit cards, uh, actually, if you spend $100 with me, I have to pay between a dollar fifty-five and $3 to the credit card company, which could effectively not only, it could give you three to six months of zero interest just on the fees that I pay up front before you even start to pay the five. Now, that seems to me that it would really incentivize people making some purchases. And what would your opinion on that be? Well, see, these credit card companies like MasterCard and Visa, why are they making such huge profits uh, through these fees? The fees are very high. All that I'm saying is let FDIC take over some banks, which, are, which they're doing already. They should replace the management with their own people, then offer these low rates to the credit card holders, tell them transfer your balances to us, will charge you only 5% and still make money. Mm-hmm. That, and then when that happens, all other companies, including MasterCard and banks, etc., they will have to lower their fees. Uh, it's, it's true that they would not make uh, enormous profits, but instead of making, say, earning, say, $10 million in salary, you should earn $2 million. Is there something wrong with that? Yeah. And let the money go to the people who need it uh, and who can... Create demand. These rich people are not creating demand. They are using their money for speculation. They're raising the price of oil this way, and and this that even hurts the economy. Bill in Indianapolis, Indiana. You're on the air with Dr. Ravi Batra. Hey, how you doing, sir? Uh, yeah, my question to you is: uh, What can we do to have an economy that benefits all Americans and not just select few? Because you know, when you really look at the situation as far as like job growth. That's not going to solve the problem because you got many Americans that have jobs but are still struggling. We have what is a price control in this country. Cost is up because, you know, you got a corporation that focuses uh, mainly on profits. We look at quarterly profits, and these companies don't work in respect of one another. We don't have a collective effort, you know, to grow this economy. Well, what uh, we need to do is to have new advisors for the president. You know, the, uh, I have a very four-line short couplets, short poem, the goal of economics is to create prosperity for all, to remove poverty and unemployment for people big and small. That's the goal of economics. Hmm. What they are doing is everything is for the, for the big, big business CEO, and that's the problem. So... The, the, the policy that I'm suggesting will create prosperity for everybody, not just for the rich. Frank in Cambridge, Massachusetts, you have a question for Dr. Batra. Yes. Uh, a few days ago, uh, 
Tom, on the third hour, gave his uh, description of what would happen if Romney were elected president. And it was my worst nightmare, actually, uh, having those fears myself. But what do you think would happen if Romney were elected president? How would the economy go? And, and we just Romney were to be elected president, uh, then we would have the same thing that uh, that we had under George Bush, the, the start of another very very serious recession that happened in 2008, and and no way out. Uh, so just remember what what happened under Bush, and that's uh, what uh, will happen under Romney. Yeah, assuming that he pursues those policies. Now, if he did what Reagan did and just started spending like crazy and stimulating the economy. It might be different. Well, you can't you can't spend more than what President Obama is doing. Yeah. Okay. So so we've already hit that that ceiling has been built in. We'll be back with more in just a moment with Dr. Ravi Batra. Check out his website, Ravi Batra, R A V I B A T R A dot com. And if you haven't read his books, Greenspan's Fraud and the New Golden Age: The Coming Revolution Against Political Corruption and Economic Chaos, I recommend you get a, a, a copy and check them out. Professor of Economics at Southern Methodist University, Dr. Ravi Batra. Right back. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. More of your questions for Dr. Ravi Batra and mine right after this. And welcome back. Uh, Tom Hartman and Dr. Ravi Batra with us, and James in Franklin, Tennessee. You are on the air with Dr. Batra. Yes, Dr. Batra, I appreciate it if you talk on the Occupy Wall Street movement and the coming demise of crony capitalism, your nine-point list, and that just about summarizes this mess up we've got. If you could go into it and explain it to the people, that straighten us out, I believe. Thank you now. Well, you're talking about my article on Occupy Wall Street uh, movement? Uh, apparently. He's, he's, he's uh, not on the phone any longer. Points. Uh, it's a nine-point list of exploitation. The government has been exploiting the people for the past 30 years, and they are creating misery for the people. It's not the people, public, uh, who is responsible. It's them. And, and uh, once we have reforms, things will become better very quickly. Mm-hmm. And and so what are the... Well, uh, le- actually, let, let's let a caller come in here and ask a question. Hubert in uh, Wasilla, California. You're on the air with Dr. Ravi Batra. Thanks for watching Free Speech TV. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, I appreciate what the doctor is saying, but uh, basically, uh, capital, we are making ourselves the prisoners of capital. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's the wrong focus. We need to start focusing on organic vitality that really subs- makes it possible for us to exist. Okay. Dr. Batra, your thoughts on that? Uh, at this point, our biggest problem is lack of jobs, any kind of jobs, not even high-paying jobs. We are, we are not even creating low-paying jobs. Mm-hmm. That's our biggest problem at this point. Once we have created a, created a vibrant economy then you can afford to look into other areas like the environment uh, or uh, anti-pollution devices and other things and so on. But first, right now, our main focus should be on creating jobs. Yeah. And, and are there other ways to do that? If the, or Actually, let me get back to your, your, your suggestion that the FDIC take the, the portfolio of banks that they've taken over and issue credit cards and compete with uh, you know, Jamie Dimon and... Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, would that require the president telling the FDIC to do that, or does that would Ben Bernanke tell him to do that? And how do we how do we get them to do that? Well, the FDIC is part of uh, the, the president's government. It's part of the government. It's not uh, part of the executive uh, branch. So the, yeah, the, the president would have to tell the FDIC to follow this type of po- policy, and then. You get Ben Bernanke involved because, and actually, Ben Ben Bernanke cannot refuse to help the the FDIC's bank because they are lending money to every bank. Uh-huh. So, they, so they will have to lend they will have to lend money to the banks taken over by FDIC also at 
low rates, and that will, this is how they would compete with other banks. Right. And, and uh, do, you, do you hold any hope that this could actually happen? I mean, it's a great suggestion. Is, is there a, what are the political probabilities, do you think? Uh, because it's a great suggestion, it won't happen. <laughs> uh, I'm being cynical right now, but yeah. I think that's the only way. That's one of the ways. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, the president would not be reelected. Okay. Dr. Ravi Batra is with us, taking your calls, 866-987-THOM. We'll be back with more of your calls for Dr. Batra on economics. What is the economic situation? He's a professor of economics at Southern Methodist University, international best-selling author. You can read all about it at his website at ravibatra.com. Dr. Ravi Batra is with us, professor of economics at Southern Methodist University, the internationally best-selling author of a number of books, including uh, Greenspan's Fraud and The New Golden Age, The Coming Revolution Against Political Corruption and Economic Chaos. Uh, Mike in Casper, Wyoming, you're on the air with Dr. Batra. Tom, before you, before you go further. Oh, certainly, just, yes. Go ahead, Dr. Batra. I just thought of something. Mm-hmm. Since I've already talked to Nancy Pelosi, and she was very, very, very impressed with this idea. She liked the idea a lot. Mm -hmm. I hope all your listeners send an email to Nancy Pelosi to pay attention to this idea and others with which we can revive the economy. It's not me alone who can do it. I can just offer suggestions, but somebody has to implement them. So I call upon all your listeners Uh today. And send an email to Nancy Pelosi. She knows, knows of me now. Uh-huh. She, we have talked together. Ask her to implement the ideas that we talked about when she was in Dallas. That's last. great. So, so email or call Dr., uh, or excuse me, uh, Nancy Pelosi's office. And uh, if you're in California, of course, you can call one of the local offices. And, and if not, you can go to callcongress.org, and there are toll-free numbers as well as the main phone number. Uh, that you, will get you through to through to uh, to Nancy Pelosi's office and and suggest that she implements some of the suggestions that Dr. Ravi Batra made to her. Brilliant, brilliant. Mike in Casper, Wyoming, you're on the air with Dr. Batra. Well, thank you, Tom, for a very interesting show so far. Uh, I, after listening to Dr. Batra, it seems like uh, it involves a lot of nationalization of m- many of our industries. Isn't this getting close to socialism as we turn over control of the oil and the, the banking over to uh, uh, the government? I didn't say a word about uh, taking over any industry. All I said was break up the oil monopolies, break up all these big companies. You know, I heard uh, one major, big, big business CEO on CNBC the other day. He was saying... We need to get, have these tax cuts again because they're good for small business. And small businesses create a lot of jobs. At that time, I wanted to send an email to CNBC. This man who's talking about small business has destroyed so many small businesses by taking them over. So here we have a great argument. Since small businesses create a lot of jobs, let's break up all these big companies, companies and turn them into small businesses. Mm. Not, that's not socialism. That's that's mass capitalism. That cap, that's capitalism at its be, at its best, as Adam Smith thought uh, yeah. about it. Yeah, Adam Smith warned us about. Uh, well, and Teddy Roosevelt broke up the monopolies. John in Oakland, New Jersey. You're on the air with Doctor Batra. Uh, doctor, uh, just like to make a comment about this. Uh, all this talk about the credit card interest rates how we should lower them. I, I think that's a disaster, and it would only hurt the more unfortunate people because easy access to spending, and that's literally what it is, but they don't have the dollar physically in their hand. They rack up the debt. They buy things they don't really need or could do without. The banks are in the business to make money and profit. You make a, uh, a choice to go to them, to that particular bank or credit card company, and I don't think we should 
reward. But or it, Dr. Botcher, aren't you suggesting that not that people would go deeper in debt, but that instead of giving the money to the banks in interest, they could use that money to buy goods That's without right. their credit cards? Don't give the money to banker to bankers so that they can they lend it to the customers. Lend it directly to the customer. Right. Don't get, don't have the middle middleman or middle person involved in it. That's all. Okay, Gary in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Gary, you're on with Doctor Batra. Doctor, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, I I think the idea. I've been talking about it. The idea of employee-owned companies or co-ops, instead of the one percent owning eighty percent of the jobs, we could have the people, you know, owning the jobs, and when they retire, they sell their stocks back to the company. How do you feel about that idea? Well, that's a very good idea. In fact, it would happen. I'm going to make this forecast. It would happen in the, in the past five, six years. That's no, in the in the next five, six years. I call it a case of economic democracy. Mm-hmm. And uh, when that happens, then people's wages or the workers' wages will rise in proportion to their productivity growth. That's what we need in an economy. When wages rise... Uh, as productivity goes up, that will automatically solve our problems. Why? Productivity is the main source of supply. Wages are the main source of demand. Now productivity keeps rising, but wages don't. So supply is rising, but demand is not. To make up for this difference, the government is spending money. We don't need that. We don't need the government to be creating so much debt for our future generation that it's not even working. Yeah. We need wages to rise in proportion to productivity and crop, crop system that you suggested, or, or I call it economic democracy, that would ensure uh, that this would, this is the way, that would happen under economic democracy. And from the founding of the Republic until about 1980, wages did correspond with productivity, and then wages flattened. They've been flat for 30 years, and productivity has continued to increase. Do I have that right? That's right. In fact, that's right. until 1980, you, you may look at... Uh, We've had very little debt in America. Even the consumers had very, very small level of debt. It's when they just stopped growing. And then we went to supply-side economics. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, Reaganomics has, has taken us down. Um, remarkable. Dr. Dr. Ravi Batra, we're, we're, I think we've just got 10 or 15 seconds left here, so I just want to use it to thank you so much, sir, for the, for the great education that you've given me and all of our listeners over the years and for being with us today. Thank you. Thanks again. That's uh, much appreciated. And be sure to check out Dr. Batra's website, Ravi, R-A-V-I, Batra, B-A-T-R-A, dot com.